last video, we saw a basic way to traverse the DOM tree. Now we're going to take a look at some methods that allow us to retrieve nodes with relative ease. Now we saw how to descend through our tree using the document.child nodes, and how to go up through the tree using the parent element ID of each node. Now you can reach any node on the page by using the child nodes or parent nodes properties, but that's going to be really repetitive. For instance, here I had to call child nodes four times, and I'm down to my h1 tag contents. In some pages you can get dozens and dozens of levels deep in your markup, and obviously we don't want to navigate by using child nodes with numbers like this. Especially because in our pages, obviously the markup is going to change, so if we wanted to get the h1, it may not always be child nodes of 1, 2, 1, and so on. For instance, if I insert a node before the HTML. So we want easier ways to get to our elements. Well, fortunately, the DOM provides a few methods to us to make that easy. So let's take a look at our page. Now, one method we can use is get element by ID. Now, this uses the ID HTML attribute, which we have defined on our H1 tag here. And let's go ahead and define another ID on our P tag, and we'll call this content. Now IDs are unique on the page. If we have an H1 with an ID of headline, no other element on our page should have headline. So anytime we were to look up something by ID, we always know we're going to get one element. If we have multiple elements with the same ID, and we try to look up an ID, we're going to get one or the other, and it just doesn't make sense. So the get element by ID will always return one because they're unique. Let's go back to our browser and we'll just refresh to make sure we get all the latest changes. And we're going to use the document.getElementsById. So we use document.getElements, now that's element singular, by ID, and that's with a lowercase d, it sometimes gets confusing because ID is that one word or fully capitalized, it's capital I, lowercase d. Now this is a function, so we're going to pass it a string, and so let's pass the string content. And so we can see that this returned to us the node for our paragraph with ID content. Now if I were to get the ID headline, we can see that we get our H1 with the ID of headline. Now if we try it with something that isn't on the page, like foo, we get null in return, a null value. Now if I were to get the h1 and assign it to the h1 variable, you can see we have the node, and it's just like the node that we got before. We can do h1.parent element and get the body, and we can do our node.child nodes and see its child nodes. Now we can only use the get element by ID on the document, but other methods can be called on any node. So for instance, I'm going to keep this h1 variable around so we still have it, and I'm just going to clear out my screen. And let's take a look at another method called getElementsByTagName. So first I'm going to call it on the method. So let's take a look at our code. So here we have two different emphasis tags in our page. We have the emphasis of world and the emphasis in our content div. So if we do document.getElements, that's pluralized, by tag name, the first letter of each word is capitalized except for get, and now we can pass it a tag name, so let's grab em, and we can see that we're returned a list of all the m tags on the page. So we have the m tag for world and the m tag in our paragraph. Now we can also call this on other elements, so let's say we have our h1 element here, and I call h1.getElement by tag name, and I pass it em as well. You can see this time we only get the world. That's because we called get elements by tag name on our h1 tag. Since the only m in our h1 tag is the one around world, that's the only one we get back. So it's nice to be able to scope what tags we get based on the root node that we call get elements by tag name on. Now to give you a taste of the frustration browser compatibility issues adds to the DOM, there is a method called getElementsByClassName. So we could call document.getElementsByClassName, 
by class name, and I have a body with the class normal. And so if I pass in normal, well, I'll get the body tag back. If there were multiple elements with the class normal, I could get those as well. Now you can see how this would be very useful. And all modern browsers support it, except for Internet Explorer, up to even including version 8. Version 9 is supposed to have support for it, but that's not going to help the older versions. So you cannot use this method without some sort of fallback. It's exactly this type of thing that makes a framework like jQuery or MooTools useful. These tools provide some facility for looking up elements by class name, and when they can, they fall back to the native implementation of get elements by class name, which is usually very efficient and very fast. Now, when the method's not available, like in Internet Explorer, it falls back to a more manual search, which will work, but is much slower. Now, the code needed to compensate for the missing get elements by class name method is fairly complicated, and it's not recommended you write it yourself. If you need this functionality, either use a library that solves the problem for you, or just use the native get elements by class name method and exclude support for browsers that don't support it. Now, it's rare that we have the opportunity to exclude bad browsers, so usually libraries are the way to go. Up next, we're going to look more in-depth into the structure of the node tree and see how to manipulate it. Mm -hmm.